morning. Thanks for joining me. <clears throat> I'm going to share a word this morning uh, that the Lord has been putting on my heart for a year. I think it's been over a year. Um, and so uh, right now, will you guys just agree with me that Satan is a defeated foe? That he will not steal the seed or the water that the Lord is scattering across the earth? The things that he is planting deep into our hearts and the things that he is speaking to us. So get behind us, Satan, now in Jesus' name. I don't condone having a conversation with Satan. I don't condone arguing with Satan. But the Bible demonstrates to us that when he comes at us, that we are to rebuke him. And we can speak out of our mouths. Actually, that is our sword. We don't go hide in a corner, duck our head in the corner, and hope that he'll leave. That's not resisting Satan. Resisting Satan is telling him to go because he can't stay and torment us. So thank you for agreeing with me. Man, he has had his hand on this word for a long time. So the Lord first gave me this word. It's been a year, maybe maybe even over a year, gave me this word. And I was just like, oh, God, so good, you know. But then the Lord delayed the word and told me not to say it yet and just hold on to it. And he would give me the right time. Well, um, the time came and um, when the, actually the time came several times, um, but the enemy was beating me up. He was intimidating me. He was lying to me, um, all kinds of different things. And so um, I actually had recorded this word uh, before and normally I just record a word one time and just release it. I don't like do editing or redo them or whatever. I don't have time for that. Um, and I just trust that the Holy Spirit will speak through me and even in my foibles that the Lord's word will go out when these words are inspired by him. I'm not just coming on here, coming up with a clever message. Anyways, so um, in hindsight, I can look back and see several reasons why the enemy has fought me so hard. Well, he always fights for the Lord's word to go out, but I can see several specific reasons why he fought me on this particular word. Um, and there's many more that I can't even see. And so um, I am just filled with like the, a righteous anger and fire of the Lord that he's not going to have his way and he's not going to stop this word from going out. So I'm sharing it and I want to draw your attention to this because this will happen to you guys too. It happens to everybody, but he is a defeated foe. So he won that battle for a time, but guess what? The Lord brought it full circle and the word is going out and people will be freed and eyes will be opened. So I just speak in the name of Jesus, Lord, open everybody's spiritual eyes and ears to hear what your spirit is speaking, Lord. Loose every mind and heart from the grip of Satan where the enemy has had a grip and has had blinders and they have developed lies that they have believed. Loose them from that in Jesus' name and just loose their mind. Give them a sound mind to hear what your spirit is speaking to them individually in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Um, okay, so this word, um, I've been learning about gardening for a couple of years and I learned about this gardening trick that people do with strawberries. And um, I thought, oh, that's kind of a cool trick. And then I went over to my friend's house and she actually was implementing it. And um, and so anyways, I uh, later on asked if I could borrow her prop. So I'm borrowing it for this video. So um, here goes the word. Um, oh, and sorry, one more thing I wanted to say. A big part of me even telling you about that struggle in the beginning is number one, so when you feel something is trying to stop you, it's invisible, you can't see it, you can't hear it, you don't know exactly what it is, but it's tripping you up, or you're getting anxiety, or you're getting fear of man, different things. There is an invisible spiritual being many, many times stopping you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. And then number two, listen, listen to this word. If this pierces something in your spirit, if this convicts you, if this is highlighted and really stands out to you, hang on to this word and seek the Lord in it because there's powerful things in it, especially another proof of that. Number one is it's God's word. Number two is the enemy fought really hard to keep this word from going out. So take that as a sign that if you heed the Lord's word, if you seek him out, he will bring you truth and he will deliver you from things that have been wreaking havoc in your life for who knows how long, maybe decades, maybe weeks, maybe decades. It'll be different for everybody. Okay, so here is the farmer's trick. Um, so you want when you wanna grow strawberries, right? Birds, they like to come and eat the strawberries. So here's a real strawberry, ta-da. Well, what they do is before the strawberry crop, um, so you plant your crop, or you can even do this before you plant your crop, but before fruit starts to show up, you actually plant, you put these in your garden. 
where your strawberry plants are planted. It's a rock and it's painted to look like a strawberry. Well, you put these throughout your strawberry bed before the real fruit um, grows out. And so it's a decoy. And so what happens is the animals who, um, specifically birds, really any animal, but what I read about was specifically birds, when they come to your crop and they're eating these, they're pecking these, right? Um, well, there's nothing good in this. It, there's no taste, there's no nutritional value. Um, it probably hurts their beak depending on how hard they are pecking at it, um, et cetera. So it, it chases them away. Not only does it chase them away and cause them to go and seek to have their needs fulfilled elsewhere, but it also causes confusion because it's written inside of those birds to seek after these strawberries, right? Berries and things the Lord has written in their DNA what they are longing for, what they need for survival. So they go to the very thing that they think that they need, the very thing that they are longing for, um, and it has the exact opposite effect. So that causes confusion too, right? Well, the reason I lay that out is because this is a tactic that the enemy uses. Everything, everything, the enemy is the um, master counterfeiter. So this is a counterfeit strawberry, right? Um, and so the enemy is the master counterfeiter and he uses the same principle against us. And um, some of us came, you know, were introduced to this principle maybe as teenagers or adults, but another thing that the enemy really wants to do and likes to do and works really hard to do is actually to implement his principles very young in our lives. Because if he can confuse us, um, if he can cause us to go get our needs, our basic needs met elsewhere, away from the places where God actually meant for us to get them fulfilled, if he can confuse us, if he can hurt us, if he can starve us and cause deficits in our life very early on, then he knows that he has created a lifetime of a person who is all of those things, constantly seeking, constantly wandering, constantly chasing after the wrong things because they have met confusion and pain um, at their introduction to what they thought were the right things. Um, and then also another side of this is um, some people, <clears throat> excuse me, so some people like early on in life, right, um, our basic needs for love, for acceptance, um, for um, feeding our souls, um, for breathing life into us relationships um, within our family, without our family, within the church body, um, if we were raised in faith. Um, and um, I mean, this, this can apply to so many areas. So wherever the Lord is applying this to you, you listen to him. I'm just giving some examples and some ideas because this, this is so big where these things apply. But if the enemy can introduce us early or at any time in our life where we think like, oh, you know what I mean? My family, right? The Lord institutes family. My family is where I get love. My family is where I get acceptance. My family is where I get good, healthy, physical touch that every human needs. Well, um, if the enemy can stir up all of these ungodly things within the family, well, the, thing, the very thing, God puts that connection within us to get those things met in our families. But if instead of love, we're getting rejection, instead of gentleness and kindness, we're getting harshness or abuse or mistreatment, um, instead of acceptance, we're being mocked, we're being pointed out because we don't fit the mold of the rest of the family. Um, well, guess what? We run away from the very thing that the Lord put in place instituted for us to have our needs met and to be loved and to grow um, and to fill us up, we run away. And you better believe that there's a false thing waiting out there for us. And so we go and this can be anything and we find the wrong thing. Well, um, well, what happens, lots of different things can happen, but one thing that happens is 
we never go back to the original thing to get our needs met or to maybe it's a church body, right? And you go there and there's a lot of ungodly things happening there. There's judgment, there's, um, there's gossiping, there's control, there's manipulation, um, there's hypocrisy. Well, you know, the, the Lord made the church body for us to fellowship, to strengthen each other, to sharpen each other, to love each other, to have compassion. But if you have met um, the, the false things, right, the wrong things that were not of God, well, you're going to run far away and you're going to go seek something else. Um, this can relate to, you know, friendships. This can relate to romantic relationships. This can relate to sexuality. Um, sexuality is a good and right thing that the Lord put in us, right? And there's good and right and wonderful, beautiful, exciting ways that we should be meeting those needs, right? And within marriage. Um, however, a lot of people were introduced, could be introduced young to um, ungodly sexual things. There could be um, confusion. There could be um, there could be, um, sorry, I'm losing my word. There could be abuses. And so even though that gift is good and right and given from God because of, um, either things that we walked into due to our own sin or things that were done to us due to other people's sin, well, it, it messed up and confused those appetites. It confused the understandings, the belief system around sexuality. Um, and and this, this can also go into identity, even apart from sexuality. Well, then, then we go and we're seeking, knowingly or unknowingly, we're seeking something else that is not meant to be. Um, this can also take place in um, our... This principle can also take place in like our careers, our calling in this life, our gifts and our talents. Um, this can also spread to things like um, um, our hobbies, the things that we enjoy. Um, anything, if we ran into anything that was unpleasant, anything that hurt us in any way, you know, just like when that that bird comes and pecks this thing. It's like, ouch, you know what I mean? Like if, if you were, if the Lord gave you a gift of singing and you were developing that, that singing voice and somebody spoke harshly to you about it or put you down about it, you might've went inside yourself and that was actually a good and right thing. But because you ran into that hurtful thing, um, the enemy was able to steal that and reroute that. And so, um, the message that the Lord is saying is, and Lord, I just pray that you would give them divine revelation, that you would highlight to each person every area in their life where they have settled for a counterfeit Lord and show them how to undo that, show them how to walk away from that and show them how to seek and how to find the real and right thing. Lord, open their eyes, open their eyes in the spirit, soften their hearts, heal every trauma and every hurt that would even keep them from wanting to find the right thing in Jesus' name. Um, so he's wanting everybody to look within, look in your life, look at your life patterns. Where are you allowing yourself, whether you've known it to this date or not known it? Some people we've known about it and and we're, we're okay with it. Other people, we don't even know because it's so deep within us and we have been so deceived. So all deception, I break off all deception off of every listener in the name of Jesus. Open your eyes in the name of Jesus. So this can also apply to the Lord, to God, um, where we had um, an experience. I talked a little bit about this with um, a harsh father or um, a harsh pastor or um, wrong ideas about God, or even maybe like when we were young, maybe we tried, or we're old as an adult, whatever, we tried reading the Bible and maybe we read something and, and we didn't understand it. We weren't being discipled. Um, we didn't know how to call on the Lord. We were relying on man, you know what I mean? And, and we saw God in a wrong light. Um, and so we've never, we've never wanted to seek him again because of our wrong beliefs or our wrong understandings about him. And so the Lord is calling us out of deception. He's calling us away from every counterfeit 
big ones and small ones alike because they wreak havoc. We have specific things designed in us, needs to be met, ways to live this life to be fruitful, to be prosperous, to be fulfilled and joyful, to be healthy, to be sound-minded, for our body to be whole and healed, for us to be delivered from the torment of the enemy. And so the Lord is calling us to himself and he's calling us to seek his face, to find out what are the good and right and godly things that the Lord has for me that I am missing out on because I have chased after a counterfeit or I, I was introduced to a counterfeit and I've been chasing it this whole time, seeking after it and I didn't even know it was the wrong thing. So um, I hope this blessed you guys. I hope that your spiritual eyes and ears have been opened and I pray that as well. I already prayed that and I keep praying for you guys and I'm excited for the freedom that comes from this and I'm excited for the things that the Lord will show you. So again, seek him in prayer by just talking to him and asking him questions. But, the, but along with that, you need to be reading your Bible. This is the this is the way that you're going to get to know who God is. This is the way that you're going to hear him speaking to you the most is in front of the Bible. This is a book full of love letters that he has written to us, okay? Um, if you need any help, if you don't know where to read it or whatever, comment and I can give you help. If this video stuck out in somebody that you love, if they popped into your mind like, wow, I, they really need to hear this, um, be brave and send them the link because the Lord, he's freeing people. He is pouring out his spirit and this is not a time to delay. Be obedient in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you.